What's going on, guys? Um, welcome to another Saturday uh, story time. It's a little awkward just talking to the camera, but what's up? Um, yeah, I wanted, I've always wanted to do like interact with my audience, and um, when the channel grows, I want to do like Saturday Q and A's or go on Instagram Live, connect with you that way. But for the meantime, I think Saturday story times are good. Today we're sipping on. A Colombian Natural by Edison Coffee Roasters. It's delicious. It's a natural uh, Colombian. The beans are right here looking pretty tasty as always. Sounds good. Got notes of a uh, ripe blackberry, honey, dark chocolate, and lavender. So that's what we're sipping on today. We got the, the fellow glass, little Hario carafe here. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Ethan Chase. I post videos every single day of me trading the stock market and multiple videos a week on personal finance, investing, side hustles, life, anything related to you know saving money or building wealth or you know investing. That's kind of what I like to uh, make videos on. So if that interests you, hit the subscribe button. It really means a lot. So today's video is going to be about how I got my uh, my internship as a sophomore in college. And if you uh, if you don't, if you're in college, you know. Or if you're a business student in college, at least you know getting an internship is hard as it is. But as a sophomore, it's even harder because you don't have. You know, you're kind of new to college, you're kind of still developing your skills, you don't have any of those experiences that employers are looking for. So as a sophomore, it's pretty hard to get an internship, but I managed to get one. Um, unfortunately, I had to kind of cancel it because of COVID, but um, I still found another internship, but that's another story. But in this video or in the story time, I'll tell you kind of my approach to finding an internship, how I went about it, my experiences, some tips I would have for someone going through the search, and just kind of my story with finding an internship. So I started looking for internships. So I'm a college student, I'm a business student. I started looking for internships around, um, call it October, November of 2019. So that fall semester. And um, my college has like a job portal, so you could go on and see what you know employers have posted jobs or job uh, posts for your college, and then you could kind of filter by jobs that you qualify for or jobs that you're interested in. You could do resume drops, which is essentially you just upload your resume and see if you hear back, or you could do more um, application based, where you answer a few questions and then see if you hear back. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of what I did. Um, I applied to a bunch of companies and that's kind of something, I don't know, as a sophomore, I think it was it was advantageous just to apply to a bunch. Um, I'm the first person in my family doing business. So, I mean, no, I don't have, I don't have really any uh, people in my family as mentors I could talk to about finding a job in the business world. Um, I do have friends, like upperclassmen in college who kind of helped me through the process, but um, just to go through the process was good just to see how it works with networking and communication and following up stuff like that like general business etiquette um, But I applied to a bunch of companies What I would recommend is is making a list of every place you apply to and kind of the point of contact The POC just of who you're going to like reach out to or who is like looking at your stuff just so you have a database and ideally best practices is, is once you get an offer, you kind of like rescind your applications to the other places or once you accept your offer, you rescind your applications to the other places. But definitely have a database of where you apply to. Um, but my, my kind of approach was I had my resume. I know some people have multiple types of resumes depending on what industry they want to go in. So if you have like consulting or investment banking, you have two different resumes. Um, my resume, I just have one resume. Um, looking back, I don't know if it would have made a massive difference, maybe. I know some people tailor their resumes to specific job applications for like those keywords. I do a bunch of places through my, you know, college's like job portal. Um, I then applied and then I, and then I searched kind of keywords on Google and LinkedIn. 
about like just job, like job postings or internships, summer internships, stuff like that. That's how I actually found my internship that was offered. It was on a Google search and not through my college. Yeah, so that was kind of my approach, which was apply to as many as possible because as a sophomore, the rate already as a junior is, I'm, a, I'm sure, is pretty low of getting accepted. So as a sophomore, it's definitely lower. So I just applied to a bunch and see what happened essentially. Yeah, what I also did was we had you know, our college had recruiting events and, you know, employers would come in and there was like career fair, stuff like that. Um, so what I did was I would go to these events, you know, I would dress up in a suit and everything. I would network, introduce myself. Um, I did have business cards, it's super cheap on like this different things for like a couple bucks. But I think um, people could have like different, maybe some people view it as cocky. I, I don't, I'm not flashing my business card. I just think it's kind of impressive when, because what happens mo most of the times is when you interact with a recruiter, you, you want like, you want contact information to follow up. So you say, oh, do you have a business card? And they'll give you a card, but you know, because they're dealing with college kids, they never get anything in return. So I always take the initiative to exchange cards with them as well. So then they have my card. And I think that's kind of what separates me from everyone else is that it's so minor it's just a business card but just just the fact that you have one is pretty impressive and pretty cool so i always give them my business card so now it's a mutual exchange and they have my info i have their info and if they throw it out if they keep if they throw it out like that's fine i'm not expecting them to keep it because they deal with thousands of kids but if they do that's great i would save all the flyers or the brochures or you know the information and then i had a spreadsheet where i kind of filled their information in kind of like a, a net like a tracker spreadsheet and as i went through the process i would kind of color code um, their names and information to see, you know, have I applied? Yes. Do I need to hear back? Yes. Do I need to follow up? Stuff like that. Just to help me organize who I'm talking to and who I need to talk to in the future. In terms of actual interviews, um, most of the interviews, so I applied to consulting companies, banking firms, um, ran any any business internship really i could find i kind of applied to that i liked i wouldn't recommend applying to stuff you don't like because when you have an interview you gotta be genuine of course so if you're not genuinely excited about the position there's just no point to try to fake it so i only apply to stuff i i, I like could see myself doing and whether that job is actually as advertised is a whole nother thing but um for the actual interview parts, a bunch of the like baking interviews I got, the first you get an automated response and the kind of first step is a hire review. That's essentially just kind of a website you go on, you kind of record yourself and the computer like shows a question on the computer, like tell me about yourself. And then you have like two minutes to like record your answer and then um, that's it. And they, you, you have a few more questions and you answer them too. I did have one, maybe two, Definitely two phone interviews, um, pretty awkward <laughs> because you can't, it's hard, you can't read their body language or, you know, pick up on those, like, if you're in face to face, you just pick up on certain stuff, like the vibe of the conversation, their body language, etc. whereas on the phone, you have no idea. So I had a bunch of interviews on higher view, a bunch of pie metrics. That's another website where you play games to like test your brain, I guess, or maybe like mini IQ tests, I guess. Different geometric like shapes and stuff. It's just random games to kind of like brain teasers, I guess. If you're new to interviewing, there's essentially two types of questions. Well, three really. There's behavioral questions, which is about you and your behavior. Tell me about yourself, like personality type questions. What's your biggest strength? What's your biggest weakness? What's a, an example where you had to step up to the plate or what's an example of when you face adversity but you push through? Questions like that kind of falls under behavioral. And then you have the second type is technical. Those are technical and based. So that would be like questions about like Excel, like what, you know, what formula do you use for this? Or um, how do you, in this type of financial model, what do you use for this? So stuff like that, that's more technical and then for consulting there's case based questions and in interviews where you are given a business scenario let, let's say uh, ethan's coffee shop is failing because people aren't coming in the door what can ethan do to boost sales so that's a, that's kind of like a case question so those are the three primary um that's all i'm aware of i don't think there's anything more in terms of prep for interviews i did a bunch of prep on the companies that i interviewed with and kind of 
what they stood for and what the position meant. There's a bank, there's a book that everyone recommends called Case in Point. I'll leave the link in the description. I'll probably be reading that. Uh, there's nothing you could control really about the process. Most of it happens out of luck. That's what I'm finding everything within life is just kind of luck by a certain degree and just the right timing. As much as you try to control it, you know, it's just something else is gonna happen. What I would recommend is definitely make contacts and relationships and friendships with upperclassmen who have been through the process. Um, I know I had like interview prep and um, you know some of my friends were going through it and we kind of helped each other out. But definitely, you know, if you're in business school, definitely make contacts with upperclassmen who are interested in what you're interested in, so they could kind of share their experiences and help you. Uh, mentorship, mentorship is a buzzword, but it's definitely a thing. Having people who, who are older and wiser definitely help you out. Sophomore year, um, the best thing you can do, the best thing you can do is get an internship if you can't. I mean, the odds are, are not in our favor, but definitely still make contacts with those employers and recruiters because by junior year, that's when they're looking to hire you. And if they already know you and maybe, you know, you followed up and you got coffee with them, the more face time you can get, the better. Um, so if you can't get the internship, just make a bunch of contacts, make a spreadsheet with all your contacts, follow up with them, see what they're, you know, before an interview, look up your recruiter on LinkedIn, look up the company, do your research, stuff like that. But um, yeah, that's pretty much my story with how I got my internship. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. The YouTube algorithm will pick up on it. Comment down below, Edison, E-D-I-S-O-N, of course. <laughs> and of course, subscribe to the channel. It truly means a lot to me. It pushes me to keep it going. Um, but with that said, I will see you later.